Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block Pizza, 1811 Pico Boulevard in Los Angeles. If you want pizza, then you want Gray Block. Get that hitter, baby. Today's episode is also brought to you by Magic Mind. Flow State now comes in a bottle. And Flow State, that's not a woman that you met somewhere maybe outside of Detroit. Flow State now comes in a bottle. Matcha, nootropics, adaptogens, and a hint of honey. It's the ultimate nemesis to procrastination. Magic Mind. Get Magic Mind. Use promo code Theo to get 10% off magicmind.co. Today's guest was the second overall draft pick in the 1989 NFL Draft. Uh, and maybe the largest offensive lineman that people had ever seen. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Um, he's lived many lives, to say the least. We're going to hear a lot about that. Uh, and he's transformed his own life uh, through the power of uh, recovery. He is a retired athlete, um, motivational speaker, and photographer, Mr. Tony Mandarich. I just left that parking break and left myself all wild. I'm not proud of a lot of things I've done. Um, Thanks for coming, man. My friend Morgan Murphy. Do you know who she is? She's a she is a writer. She messaged you. I think she I said never on Instagram one time. Right, that's what she said. But she messaged me yesterday. She's like, "Oh, I'm so excited for this. I'm yeah. such a big Tony fan. I'm a she's big, a comedian. huge fan of his. Uh, yeah, she's a comedian. Yeah. and a writer. And she's like, I'm such a huge fan of his photography. Right. Yeah. She um, I want to say about six months ago messaged me or had commented on a DM on Instagram, uh, and then I kind of looked her up because I saw she had that seal like mm -hmm. that she was who she was right so i was like well i just want because i didn't know who she was so i checked it out and i was i was like oh you know she's a comedian and she's been to the, i think tempe improv and all that stuff and yeah yeah she's a yeah she goes over to the comedy store a lot of where fra i know her from and then yeah. she's written on a bunch of shows but it was just it, you know it's just interesting the people that will reach out when you have a certain guest coming right on, right and it always uh yeah. it always surprises me yeah, I told um, her if she's ever through Phoenix. To yeah, that's what she said. She's like, she just hasn't been, I guess. That's what she said. She's like, tell him I, I plan on on seeing him at some point. Cool. Um, yeah, she's definitely a worth. I mean, a lot of people are worthwhile. Hanging. Yeah, she's one of them. she seems very straight up, very authentic. She's a cool chick. Yeah, and or cool whatever she is, man. Person. I mean, I know she's person. a woman, but yeah. yes, cool person. Um, L B G T Q I N. Yeah, <laughs> bro. I don't know what don't letters to know. say these days. My friend juggles now, and he said he feels left out. So I want to call him the alphabet. Yeah, I know. Dude. And that's not referring to her. I'm just talking about. Oh, in general, it's hard. Can you imagine going to get it your license now? Uh -uh. Male, female, Hispanic. Ghost. Like, go, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm the alphabet. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> just gonna, but the thing is, it's just going to add up until it's just everything, and then it's going to come full circle. It's so stupid. It's some things are getting absolutely ridiculous, man. Um, you live where do you live these days? I'm in Scottsdale. Oh, nice. How yeah. do you like it over there? I love it. I've been there since 04, okay. 04, 05. And what spurred the move over to there? You know, it was kind of. I had a golf course in Canada where I grew up, and it was family owned. I owned half of it, and I was just tired of. You know how family businesses can go awesome, mm -hmm. or they can go. Hmm, not so good. So it didn't go like really bad, but it wasn't like I wasn't, I guess, receiving what I was promised I was going to receive. Okay. So I was kind of like, instead of making a big deal about it, I'm just going to get out of the business. And instead of giving them a two week notice, I gave them a nine month notice. Okay. Just so, you know, they could figure things out and stuff. Oh, yeah. And, like a baby. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's plenty of time to figure stuff out. Yeah. I'm not just going to leave them hanging. So. I like literally sat at the kitchen table and I was like, <clears throat> if I could do anything anywhere, where would it be? And it was photography and it would be in the Southwest. Although I didn't know if I was going to go Nevada, Cali, uh, Utah, or Arizona. 
you know, I, I think Arizona was the pole for some reason, probably because of Sedona. Yes, yeah, Sedona. I, got, I mean, I'm only an hour and a half from Sedona. A lot of seancers up there, a lot of wizards. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of um, crystals. Yeah, a yeah, a lot of crystals. <laughs> oh, it's it's not crazy in Sedona to drive by a woman's house and see her charging her crystals out in the in the yard. Right, on, right, On right, a full moon. Like, right. Oh, she's putting all, she's wheelbarrowing them out there to charge yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, That's natural. It's probably my favorite place on the planet. But the crystal stuff, it doesn't even freak me out. It just makes me kind of go whatever yeah then that's yeah, I'll drive by, I'll this, right I'll home. <laughs> i'm like cool right <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> whatever gets you through right. it <laughs> exactly what it really right. is because what works for me may not work for them yeah right it's kind of amazing how there's so many different like um whether it be relics or uh deities and there's so many different avenues for people to find uh comfort yeah yeah i mean yeah there is there's and then sometimes they're like i do a, i used to do a lot more than i do now but i used to do a lot of ritualistic things I, maybe i shouldn't say ritualistic but just stuff like i would always tie my left shoe before mm -hmm. i would tie my right i would always put my left shoe on before my right shoe like before yeah. a game or just in day-to-day -day living and then i forced myself to break that i just said i was like I, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna live habits. wild on the edge. I'm gonna put my right shoe on first. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, nothing happened today that was bad, so I'm good. <laughs> you know. I'm gonna tell. Yeah, I'm gonna put this right, right in my neck. <laughs> right. Um, so you uh, you started you. So w was it hard to leave Canada when you left Canada? Was that tough? When I left the golf course, when or you when left, I yes. went left for school, when you left uh, the golf course, when you kind yeah, of yeah, like, was it was canada's awesome man. it's freaking awesome i love it i mean you know I, I i you know i grew up in canada till i was 15 and then my senior year of high school went to ohio for the sole purpose of besides the obvious of graduating from high school but to get exposure to get a scholarship to a major american college because it was easier by if you were yeah, in the states yeah and then it just so happened that the high school i ended up going to was in the same town as where my brother was going to college at kent state so he would become my legal guardian. So like we had to go to court and everything. My parents had to sign off. Wow. And, and they got you a home down there? No, I actually ended up living with my brother. Wow. On an off-campus apartment. And were you guys, was that like kind of party central? Or, you, or were you so focused on that time at, at, on football? I was very focused, but there was, yeah, there was some partying. Like, I mean, there was, it was the first time I ever got drunk was, believe it or not, a senior high school. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, wow. will, it will surprise a lot of people, right? First time I ever dabbled in weed was for my senior year of high school yeah so yeah for so for some that would almost seem a little bit late in the game yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um what what is your height and weight now what are you at now i'm six five probably about 265 270 and what were you at when you were at your maximum beefed out you know butcher box <laughs> the heaviest i ever got or the biggest i ever got was like well i was six six i was an inch taller but the compression gravity catches oh, up. Oh yeah, um, and God will pull you back down. Right, the right, right, right. <laughs> you know I'd be four foot one if that. Yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, it's like one of those. I'm glad I didn't get what I really deserved. Right. Yeah. Oh, totally, man. <laughs> but um, oh, I, I was like three thirty three was the big like off season biggest I got, and it was like just slinging weight around, heavy. But playing weight that was not a good playing weight. It wasn't a good playing weight. That's you right there. Damn, bro. Yeah, K -A -C Man, you were damn romantic -A -C? too. My God, romantic. if I was a shark and I saw you surfing, I'd bite, I'd bite you, bro. No homo, bro. You know, or yes homo. I don't know what they're doing now. But, Alphabet uh, soup. <laughs> yeah, dude. What is it like carrying, um, what was it like carrying that much body weight around? Did, was there anything that started to be different? I've used steroids in myself growing up, you know, right. so I have some experience of what it's like to mm -hmm. have a body that's different than like. What'd you take? I took uh, testosterone and then some other things. I don't even know what they were. So, but you got like, how, did you gain like what, 20 pounds, 30 pounds? Yeah, I probably gained 30 pounds, yeah. So that's a significant amount of weight, right? Of muscle, mostly yeah. muscle. So you know that feeling, right? Well, here's the thing. In the off season, I'd be like 333 and just to put muscle on, put size on. It was almost like, I don't want to say it was like bodybuilding where they have an off season and they're putting on weight so they can cut down for a show. But I would try to do all my building and my bulking in the off season, my, get all my strength. And then as the season got closer, and I mean like 16 weeks out, we'd start running. So, it, you know, as you're running, it makes your, it leans your muscles out and it's harder to keep 
like that big bulk. Yeah. But a good like playing weight for me was like 310. Like I at 310, like I can honestly tell you at 310 I felt like I was 150. Wow. Like I could like run like it was I was like I could stop on a dime and like that's what I felt like. Yeah. And you know, and you step on a scale and you're 310, but I think it's it's like everything was so strong, like you know, your core is strong just from heaving all that weight. I mean, you don't even have to work your core. Yeah. At that point, if you're oh, doing all the power p- cleans, you've yeah. been down and pick up a hundred hundred pound dumbbell. It's I mean, you're well you're on a light day, right? A hundred yeah. pound dumbbell, but one fifties, one sixties, you know, totally. right? Totally. <laughs> 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 fucking meathead here. Where you go, <laughs> oh yeah, I was walk jacked up. I'm like, I never walked like that. It's you're like, at home. You're I, curling I, your grandparents. <laughs> Yeah, you're just like, like this right? is getting crazy. Right? I'm like, you guys need to eat a Do sandwich. you remember the first time that you, when, when did you first start? And is it okay to talk about this kind of stuff? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. If, if you're comfortable with it. I am, man. Right. I am. Yeah. Uh, our audience, a lot of our audience is, I mean, I don't know what, I mean, a lot of them I think need help, and, uh, <laughs> but, but we all do. And that's yeah. kind of where our audience all kind of meets each other is right. in that space where it's right. like, we're all imperfect creatures. Yeah. Um, do you remember? Uh, so the first time you ever used steroids, mm-hmm. w- w- take me through a little senior, bit. Of that. It was a senior, my senior year of high school in Kent. Mm-hmm. But it was, uh, I shouldn't say, but that sounds like I'm making an, an ex- excuse for it. It was in April slash May. Mm-hmm. So it was like the last two years or last two months of my senior year. So I had already signed a scholarship with Michigan State. So football was over. You had already been doing really well at football. Yeah. And, and uh, well enough, see, I was lucky because our team, our high school team had like five, like, like tier one, um, like Maurice recruits. Claret. R- right. I mean, they like, you know, Ohio's like all these big schools were coming to watch those guys. And the whole plan was, well, let's keep our fingers crossed. And they noticed me. And they did. And they did. So, so the move down to America, the move to Ohio, the living with your brother, all that was really, I mean, you guys must've been living a little bit like, wow, this is all panning out. Well, yeah, yeah, because now yeah. you're, you're well, and you put a plan together, right? Right. So I mean, we li- I literally put the plan on paper. This is the plan, and let's not continue the plan until this gets executed. Because if it doesn't work, then there's no reason for the other plan, right? Because I don't want to make a plan B, <laughs> right? Yeah, you were <laughs> as soon as you make plan B, you screwed yourself on plan A. It's like, oh, I always got this to fall back on. Oh, plan B has a no. lot of pizza in it, <laughs> right? <laughs> I always know, and that, weed, apparently, you, know? you know, yeah, and weed too. And <laughs> right? Nick gets all excited when we say it, but that's only because. He but yeah, but yeah, the sole purpose of the Ohio move was literally to get a scholarship. So you got that. So so right at the end of high school, so you start. That's when you get. So that's when I started the steroids, and the, and the catalyst was. And who um, told you about it? My brother. He did. Yeah, he was into it. Yeah, cool. And he's you know my hero and and my mentor, my idol. You know he passed away when he was thirty one from cancer. Oh, I was in like ninety three, nineteen ninety three, February eighth to ninety three, and uh, but you know I'm sorry to hear that, man. That's heartbreaking. Yeah, it was you know and and you know it's like the toughest part about that is. I was like so in the bag, messed up with alcohol and painkillers at that time. You know, it's like I wasn't there sober. Right. Right. Yeah, you weren't that, that no, present, wasn't present self that you right. can like, oh, man. Yeah. But, you know, it's like there's tools to deal with that stuff, you know, yeah. and, and stuff. And I've dealt with it and I'm, I'm good with it, you know. And But the. What was he like? The, what was he like, your brother? Sorry oh, to interrupt man, you. He was, he was the best. Yeah. He was, yeah. He was the best. He, he taught me so many things. Like, he taught me so many things that. And, and did so many things that today would be considered abuse, mm-hmm. you know. Um, he made me, I remember one time, it was like a Friday. I already got the scholarship and everything, and it was a Friday. <laughs> we were working out. And so I'm a high school senior. He's a college senior. And he's working out with his lifting partner, who's a bodybuilder. And this is in Kent. And Kent, at that time, was a really small town. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I was just gassed. I was tired, and I was like, you know what? I, I, I'm just gonna chill today. I'm not gonna work out. I'm, but I got to go to the, the gym because he's my ride home. Oh yeah. And the gym from the high school was like walking distance, and the walk back to the apartments was like two, three miles. Hey, I mean, it's not like it's not walking distance, but huge snowstorm, right? Oh yeah. And and I was like, I'm just not gonna lift, and and I could see them both like shocked. And because I loved lifting, but I was tired, and they freaking ripped into me. Like it was—I mean, it was life changing. It was life changing because they were like Tony Robbins, you huh? 
No, they no. That would have been nice. Tony Montana. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Damn. Yeah. 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 Say yeah. Say hello. Um, <laughs> they uh, say hello to my big friends. Yeah. They were like, yeah. you think fucking uh, you Let's know, go. you know, John Smith, who's at Michigan State right now in his third year, is gonna you know not take it easy on you when you get there. You're gonna knock your you know what off when yeah. you get there. He's like, they're like, because I think that they thought, and and maybe I did, or maybe it seemed that way that I thought that okay, well, I got the scholarship already. I'm uh, good, you know, I can chill now. And I never really was like that. But they really were like, you know, staying they, on top of you. Yeah, which is good, right? I think where today it'd be like, oh, you're pushing somebody yeah. too much. It's like, no, look, it's support. I, I looked at it like they were supporting me. I had to walk home in that blizzard. <laughs> oh man. I, I'm so glad it happened. Oh, right, I'll run a four-one in a blizzard <laughs> with I, the wind behind oh, you. Oh yeah, dude. With the wind behind you. I run right. about a four fifty <laughs> or four fifty or four. I run about a four one twenty. I four, think <laughs> five. So it's an eight two yeah, forty. Yeah. Well, you got some momentum going. <laughs> yeah. So you're probably in the seven second mark. Dude, I run a jog. <laughs> okay, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I run um, as fast as I have to. <laughs> did you think? Do you think like looking back on it that you did like do? It, um, cause I get curious as to like, I remember I was working at a restaurant. They had a bus boy there mm -hmm. that was an older guy mm -hmm. and he was doing steroids and it, uh, and so we would go to the gym together and next thing you know, it was just like something we did, right? you know? And, um, and he was older than me, this guy. So sometimes I went looking back, I wonder would I have done it if it wasn't like an older person, if it had just been a buddy, I don't think too much on it, but sometimes I just like to look back at like, you know, where was like the influence coming from or was the influence coming from inside of me, like wanting something um, different or wanting a different experience, you know, right. wanting to like put anything into myself right. to replace something inside of me that was missing, you right. know? Yeah, <laughs> which is a story of our lives. Totally, right, right. I mean, which, chasing, which later in life I'm I could relate to. I'm chasing something that's already inside of me, Yeah, but I'm looking for external answers or external yeah. things to fill that void, oh, but totally. really the answer is inside of me. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like it is because no. it feels like there's nothing inside but of me. Once you get sober, clear-headed, and kind of can start reflecting on life as you get older, yeah, you sh that's when, at least for me, at my experience is I start to see, I was like the dog chasing my tail. Yeah. Looking for this, looking for that. And it's like the whole answer is like with me the whole time. Yeah. It's just like stop, take a look, slow down, you know, breathe. And Yeah. But the catalyst for the actual steroid taking was I couldn't bench 315. Cause that's three big plates on each side. Oh yeah. And, but I could do 295 for like five reps, but I couldn't do 315 for one. So it was like a psychological block. And I got on like some really light steroids and like within two weeks I was like at three benching like 325. Damn. So I was like, oh, they definitely were. Well, we got on some Vietnamese shit one time. I don't even think it helped me lift. It helped me cook. It definitely <laughs> helped me like I could run a walk. Dude, I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> I could cook over a fire suddenly in my yard, but I could not fucking do it. Because we got some gutter steroids that came through, man. Like, we got, like, bottom yeah. of the barrel not, stuff. Was it, like, top of it taped closed? I mean, yeah, it was like, <laughs> like risky. It wasn't even sealed and stuff? You know? Bro, I remember one time we all went to Mexico on a class trip, uh -huh. so we came back. Literally, people would buy steroids and then put them in shampoo bottles, just kind of rinse Time. them out a little. No, and oh. just pour it in there. Oh, my so God. So then, for, like, people are just pulling up at this dude's house and just syringing out of this Unreal. you know head and shoulders Unreal. you know and that's it i mean it got you it <laughs> not, got you both of those not quite pharmaceutical <laughs> no, no, grade no, no. <laughs> holy but, smokes but yeah we had some of the cleanest yeah. muscles in town right we'll say that <laughs> well you're willing to go to any lengths right oh totally that's man. the question that it's like i really was yeah and so was i and i am today too in in certain areas of my life yeah. but it was like i'm gonna do whatever i gotta do to be the best player I can be within re like within the rules. Right. But steroids were breaking the rules. So those were within the rules of the time. No, no, they were breaking the rules. Oh, they were. Yeah, they were. So, and so I, there was a day where I had to make a conscious decision. It's like, I'm not going to kill it. I'm not going to sit here and lie to myself because I wasn't like hooked on pain girlers. I wasn't drinking alcoholically or nothing like that at that time. I was like, is it worth it? Mm. And, and it was, and it, I, it was, yeah. I mean, yeah. looking back oh, at totally. everything, and and you know what, it was worth it. And the least amount of that worth it is monetary. Even though it made mil it, it helped me make millions of dollars. Right. The least, the greatest worth and value in that are the lessons learned in life from taking them. But at the time, you didn't know that, though. No. 
Right. But I had to make a conscious decision on, will I ever look back and regret and saying like, what could I have been? Ah. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm gonna go to any lengths. Plus, and this is not to like, I'm not like blaming anybody, but the atmosphere was like, you know, the end of the 70s, it happens. So this was 1983, 84. So who won four championships in the NFL in the 70s? Steelers, right? Oh, I thought it was maybe Packers. Steel, no, they oh, had the Steelers, ones that, that's right. Remember, they won two in a row. Or, Is that then, with Bradshaw? Yeah, yeah, and all those guys. And they're like, you know. Jerry Olshansky was out there? I don't know him, but. But Webster and uh, Steve Corson, and all these old linemen, they were, I mean, all jacked up, right? And it was obvious. Yeah. And I was like, in my head, and, and my brother kind of felt the same way, was like the only road to the NFL is through steroids. Oh, interesting. Or, or at least it's a spoke in the wheel. Yeah. And especially, I think, as a white guy, you got to get a, you got to get on something, you know? For what? I mean, just, no, just, oh, I think, <laughs> no, you just got to get... If I'm a white guy, I'm getting on steroids due to play anything. Listen, can you imagine if you if someone had a drug for that? Yeah. Oh man. Um, how rich they'd be? Oh uh, yeah. Is your penis bigger? <laughs> well, hell, we sell them half of our ads. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're trying. Give me some samples yeah. before we. <laughs> we got. No, I'm sure we. No, have but something. it was it was like when I say this, I say it literally. Like, mm -hmm. um, I try not to be in too much gray area because that's kind of how I lived my life. And as the older I got, I started to realize I thought I had to be in gray area somewhat, but it's not. It's just being more tolerant and flexible of the way other people are. But I, I can make it crystal clear on what I'm about and mm -hmm. what I believe in and what I don't believe in, um, and then all the variables in between. So I knew I was taking them. I knew it was wrong. I knew I was breaking the rules, whether I was taking pills and injections or both. Right. Um, but I was like, I'm gonna, you know, their testing was so mediocre. Yeah. And, you know, I think that I became kind of like a red flag to the NCAA because um, like we did them well. Right. Or I should say I did them. I did right. them the correct way to get the most out of them, mm -hmm. and I didn't like I held nothing back in the in the training, and that was whether it was running, whether it was lifting, doesn't. And it, oh, it, I see. Like, you didn't try to mask it. You almost didn't even mask it. You were doing them. You just hit right. them from the test. Right, and and I did like I didn't go around telling people, and I always whenever the question was asked, um, "Do you do steroids?" by the media. My answer would always be like, I've never tested positive for steroids. Right. So it's like, you gotta be pretty dumb not to read, read between, between the lines. lines. Exactly. Yeah, yeah there's mean, only two lines. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you had a comma, there's only one. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really true, man. There's, uh, I remember one thing that got me I remember about, and it, I've just, we haven't had anybody in here. I don't think that's ev that has ever done steroids that I knew of. So it's like, it's just, for me, it's interesting to talk about because mm -hmm. we talk about it on the podcast yeah. sometimes over the years. And um, so I remember being in class one day and some kid, there was a new kid in class and he thought I was going through the, hall, the, the aisles, picking up people's papers or something for the right, teacher. Right. And he thought I was the teacher's husband. And I think because I'd been doing, I was suddenly oh, like stronger. Up. And yeah, 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 I yeah. just looked stronger. Right. And, you know, and I just, the, you know, at that time, the thought that somebody would, would, you know, that I would be married to somebody that knew, first of all, that even knew mathematics as well as this lady did. You know, like it almost just was flattering. You know, right, like, holy right, shit. Right. Dude, you think that's my wife? That's pretty I cool. I the older women. Right? Yeah, she drove here. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, this is a real lady over there. Um, but I just remember that one moment that's like, I don't know. I just felt like people saw me. I just felt more confident. I felt stronger. My, I just, and right, right then, man, those feelings were feelings that I never had. Right. Are they good or what? Oh, right. Bro, they were so good. Right. They were so good. And then, uh, but you also did the work. You also worked out, right? Oh, I was, we, we worked out all the right. time and I, you know, dieted properly. Yeah. And I, you know, you would get on milk, thistle and all these yeah, yeah, bootleg yeah, yeah. things you would yeah. hear about to yeah. kind of take care of yourself. Um, but it was definitely like, it was interesting how I went from, if you'd have asked me two weeks before, would you ever do steroids? I'd have said, no way. Right. But then suddenly I was over a line. Right. And for me in a lot of my areas of life, that, that, that became something sometimes I really don't want to look at the truth that there's a lot of lines that I've crossed in my life that I 
probably wish I hadn't. You know, I remember thinking, oh, I'll never hook up with a married woman, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and then cross that line. Just right, like right, right. Things, things that like, like where you're saying like setting kind of boundaries or wh wh who you are and things that you do, will right. and won't do. Right. I had those things, but I always went past them you and then them, yeah. would live and still probably live with a ton right. of the shame from a lot of it. You right. Know? And that's, you know, and a lot of the stuff you described, I mean, you're, it's like, were you following me around, right? right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, like, like everybody's done stuff that where they've kind of set their boundaries or these are my code of ethics, like right. my personal code of ethics. And then, you know, you cross them. And, and you know, I think when you're younger, I, I, at least the majority of the people I've encountered as far as friends and stuff, the younger you are, the more kind of like, ah, screw it, it's okay. The older you get, the, the road narrows. And stuff that you could do a couple of years ago or five years ago that were maybe not the most ethically, you know, right? Be a man, stand up and be a man, like kind of thing. Because standing up and being a man today is not about how big your muscles are. Yeah, it's about doing the right thing. It's changed a lot. It's changed a lot, and and I think, I I think it's changed for the better. Even though we're in a present circumstance of debacle, it's oh, totally. been such a great year to watch people. And oh, how yeah. messed up people are, and 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 to be like, man, I just want some toilet paper, and it's not even a shit disease, right? Right? And it's like, why is everybody hoarding toilet paper? And I was like, I, like six rolls will last me six weeks, seven yeah. weeks. Right? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like, but there's not on the there was what in March, April. There was like nothing to get. Yeah, it just it just it was interesting to watch people panic because. You know, you're sober, I'm sober. So we know, like, in a way, like, I feel lucky that I had a, a lot of hardship mm -hmm. because, and the reason I feel lucky is because I've put perspective on it. And I've also, the tragedy would be if I didn't change it. If I kept living that way, well, that'd be the tragedy, right? And But right. I, it gave me perspective to change it. So my four years in Green Bay were a train wreck. And I was, there wasn't, you know, a single day in Green Bay where I was like stone cold sober. It was either some kind of a pill in me, there was anything that would alter me from the chin up, right, um, in my brain, where I was drinking or I was doing something. Now, that doesn't mean I was sloppy down, falling down, drunk drinking, but right. I would need a drink to stop the shakes and yeah. then go to practice. Wow. Right? Well, it's kind of hard to pass block in the NFL, <laughs> yeah, period, sure. let alone when you're half in the bag. Yeah. So, you know, looking back at a lot of those things, and being going through all that pain, like I got into so much emotional pain, I was sick and tired of my own bullshit. Oh man, that's to that's uh, that right. Is, it's exactly where I'm at right now. I'm just and so tired of myself. That's when we change. Sick of yourself, right? Like literally, uh, yeah. people are like, "What are you on?" And you're like, "I'm on myself," right? And it's fucking killing me. Yeah. Like it. People don't understand sometimes. And that's a lot of what I think addiction is for me. I don't even know sometimes if I've ever had a lot of chemical dependency mm -hmm. as much as. I, the way I'm feeling affects mm -hmm. me so heavily, right? Like it's a drug, like yeah. to the point where it's like, and then I become addicted to it, right. and at the same time suffering from it. Yeah, and I think people sometimes can't understand some of that, like what it's like to feel that way, you're right? And it's, and they're like, you're a wimp or you're this man. It's like you think I don't want you think i want to feel this way every day when i wake up you think i want to be angry or be right. miserable or you know like I, no right. this is something is happening right. to me right. and it's hard to handle right yeah and and you know i mean listen you it's like again are you following me around because you're telling me my story right it's right. exactly how i feel and i don't feel as, i still get definitely times like that but less and less yeah and and it'll change and i've been you know over 25 years now almost 26 years sober and wow but you know what like the first three years were like just like you could have cut me off you could have done robbed me i would have been like all right here you go cool have a good day <laughs> i was so happy not to be miserable yeah right oh the beginning of sobriety right? when you're like when you see when something happens as a perspective switch in the way you see in the world and the way that it really is yeah God, bro. Yeah, it, went, it, it literally, like you talked about the four or five days or two weeks before you took steroids. Mm -hmm. You never thought you would take steroids. Mm -hmm. Four days before I got sober, I never thought I'd be in a treatment center four days later. Wow. And that was a, a decision I made. Right. And it, because of the emotional pain. And I was just looking in the mirror disgusted oh. at what I saw. And all the, I was like, what a bunch of 
bullshit and lies and deceit and just and it just gets so hard you stack up so much stuff it's just too heavy yeah. and it's so interesting you had so much weight on your body mm -hmm. like so much and it was like but then you get this relief of all of this yeah, fucking weight crazy isn't it which is just almost so ironic in your like it's crazy in your space and to and, but in today like like you talk about like today's circumstance when i do feel the way like you know if i feel i have a shitty day or it's like like I'm sabotaging myself or whatever. I know why it's because I'm not connected. Mm. I'm not either talking to people, or I'm not, or I haven't like for me. I haven't hit my knees in the morning and asked for help. Well, when you're, I think that this is a powerful thing. When you're six five, like now six five two sixty five, whatever. When you hit your knees and you are praying to the God of your belief and asking for help through the day and asking about what you can add to the stream of life instead of yeah. sucking out of the stream of life for a change that's a pretty humbling experience when you're that big a stature so you know i was doing that when i was six six you know playing for the colts wow. at six six three fifteen three twenty strong as an ox and it's a, it's a very humbling experience knowing you're knowing how powerful you are right and i could make stuff happen like i can make things happen by the old phrase just grab the bull by the horns just make it happen if you gotta step on people's toes do it just make it happen it's like I don't care how you got to block this guy. Just don't get a penalty and block him. I don't care if you got to take his knees out, whatever, right? It's like go to any lengths to protect your quarterback. So it's it's kind of like that, but it's like, you know, it's when you have that stature, that size, that power, and you're in the weight room slinging weight around and all this. But in the morning, you know, when you get on your knees and ask for help, that's a humbling, it's a humbling act. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and you know, it's like, it's basically saying, you know, I can't do this by myself. I tried and almost killed myself. Yeah. Almost killed myself trying. Yeah. Because I'll never forget when I'm in the treatment center in Detroit and it was no fancy treatment center. So this was the, you, and this was the first time you ever went into treatment? First time ever. So you went in and got it. Yeah. I'm not going to do it again. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, okay, take us there. No, the girl, the girl, the lady counselor. It was our first, like, small, like, 10 people session mm -hmm. with a counselor and, it was all our first time with this meeting and she goes, um, so before we start, and she's like, and this isn't pointing anybody out, she's like, this applies to everybody. She's like, just before we start, I just want you all to know that all of your best plans of building your empires and building everything <laughs> got you here in this treatment center in Detroit, Michigan. And I can see like I, you know, I 90 or whatever it is going by in the interstate, I'm going, She's right. Yeah. And I was like talking about a Louisville slugger coming across your forehead going, holy shit. That reality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, funny now mm -hmm. wasn't funny then. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, trying, you know. I'm trying to think of some of those first moments that, you know, whenever I went into the rooms, because mostly I learned about recovery through my family. My, I have a, siblings that are, you know, in and out or been in the program and, mm -hmm. um, and probably my father. I mean, I think so many people struggle with addiction to different things. Yeah. But I remember getting, I remember I drove through the parking lot one night of a of a room that's not far from where I live. And I was talking to my brother or something the next day. And he said, well, you know who's not thinking about getting treatment? And I, I said, he go, I said, who? He goes, people that, are, people that aren't driving through that parking. You know what I'm saying? Like not everybody's driving through the parking lot of an AA center last night. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. there's something inside of you that's curious, that's yeah. thinking like, yeah. And I think sometimes it is. There's a magnet that's created by that program. Um, you know, last night I went to a meeting and I went over to a buddy's house and uh, and I got there and I hadn't been in probably like three months to his meeting and um, it's just like six or seven guys sitting outside by right. a fire. Right. And I get there and suddenly like I walked around the group and just hugged like every guy there. I know them all. Right. And it was funny because I just had the worst day and I get there and – uh. And I was like, man, I didn't know that I was going to hug all these guys when I got here. I forgot that. And they were all so excited to see me, like each individually. Right, right. We have our own little relationship. Right. And like, sure. I just, I forgot that all these guys cared about me. And I forgot that I cared about them. Like, it's just like. The camaraderie. Yeah. yeah. And unless I, like the half-life or the residual effect of like care it doesn't the shelf life isn't long inside right. of me for some long it you know it's really it's almost like the shelves are like at an angle and when somebody puts care on them they just slide yeah. it just and i don't know why i think it was just the way the shelves were built or right, something you right. know but 
it was just crazy because next thing you know, it was like the best moment of my day. Right. And all these guys was like, man, I always feel like nobody cares, but these guys care. They right. all care. And right. I care about them. And I just, for, it just, it doesn't stick to my ribs like I wish it would a lot of times. So that's why uh -huh. I think some people are like, man, you chase your tail a lot. It's like, because I forget that that I, that the tail is there i right. forget that it how it grew Sometimes the tail's wagging the dog yeah. right oh to, yeah it's right. like um i don't know it's just it's it's all fascinating man the program is pretty fascinating you know recovery uh it works so so take us a little bit more so so you you have that experience with your brother kind of and then you get into it and then you're playing at michigan state then yep I, and, and you're yeah. doing and so at that point you're on steroid you're getting into it yeah 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 like um my brother had got drafted in the first round in the Canadian Football League, so he went up to Edmonton. Oh, for the Eskimos? Yeah. Oh, with Ricky, yeah. uh, who played up there, quarterback? Uh, uh, Warren Moon was just done. He had come, went to Houston. Who just played up there, Ricky? Uh, he well, just played a few years ago, six, seven years well, ago. I couldn't tell you six, seven years oh, okay. ago. But it was Dunnigan, I think, was the quarterback. Matt Dunnigan was the quarterback when my brother played there. But um, And then you know that year he got drafted was the same year I went to Michigan State. Okay. Because he was already done with Kent State. So was that pretty? So was that tough when he left and you're still there, or it was at that point you were off? No, and we kicking? sat down and we made a new plan. Dang! Because it was like, all right, this plan is executed. Now let's make another plan. And then, so we made a general plan. He reached his goals to get drafted. He obviously wanted to get drafted in the NFL, but you know, wasn't you know? I guess it's a nice demand in Canada, and, though. They apologize yeah, after sacks, right? <laughs> Like pick a guy up and stuff. Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> Here they're like stepping on the guy's throat. Bro, Canada, somebody will come across the street just to apologize to you. They didn't even do anything. <laughs> hey, ever been to a Tim Hortons? Oh, yeah. It was dude. good or what? Yeah, that's really, really good. Cake donuts and stuff? Yeah, really it's like you can get a meal there. I was like, what'd you have for dinner? Eight chocolate donuts? <laughs> yeah. Aren't those fluffy? No, they're like cake donuts. They're good. Tim bits, you know, those little Tim oh, bits. Oh, yeah, like dude, donut I, holes. Those. I love going into yeah. Tim Hortons. Every time I go, people are like, what do you like to see in Canada? I'm like, Tim Hortons. You know? <laughs> they're all a little right. different. Right, 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 <laughs> yeah. right, right, yeah. Oh, what's that on the roof? A reindeer, maybe. What is it? Oh, that's your stepdad trying to do a breaking and entering. But no matter what, the holiday season is here, and holiday shoppers are buying more stuff online than ever before. Man, it's crazy. If you're an online seller, now you might be struggling to keep up. It's a pain in the butt just, you know, having to get each order and process it, and oh my God, where are the labels? That's why you need to get your ship together with ShipStation. Which shipping carrier should you use? Well, ShipStation is the fastest, easiest, and most affordable way to manage and ship your orders. In just a few clicks, you're managing orders, printing out labels, and getting your products out fast. ShipStation works no matter where you're selling, through Shopify, Amazon, eBay, even your own website. ShipStation brings all your orders into one simple interface, making them easy to manage from any device, even your phone. ShipStation works with UPS, USPS, FedEx, even International. No wonder ShipStation is the number one choice of online sellers. And right now, this past weekend, listeners can try ShipStation for free for 60 days when you use offer code THEO. If you're running a business and you're managing the orders yourself, get some help. It's free. That's right. Go to ShipStation.com. And use offer code T-H-E-O. Make sure your business can meet the demands of this massive online shopping season. That's ShipStation.com. Enter offer code Theo. ShipStation. Make ship happen. Well, I'll tell you, today I'm wearing a uh, business shirt. Or a church shirt, they call it. One unexpected side effect of the year is it feels like fashion is gone. And I don't know about you, but I don't even know what the trends are nowadays. I saw somebody the other day wearing a hazmat suit, pressure washing a box of uh, Triscuits. So what the hell is that? What I'm telling you is do what I do. Don't buy for now. Buy for forever. For timeless pieces that will last a lifetime of wear, check out Faherty. That's right. Faherty makes high quality, comfortable clothing for life. Sustainably minded, designing products with a thoughtful focus on fabric. Every piece is made to last a lifetime. That's beautiful. You could give it, give it to somebody when you died. You died, give it to somebody. Have it at the funeral. A little to-go bag. There you go. There's a sweater. Fire tea. 
Fire Tea is committed to community and the environment and all that they do. The company is run by the Fire Tea family, and they are very hands-on, ensuring everything they do lives up to their values. The Legend Collection is legendary. Check it out. You want clothes that last. Enough of this junk. Enough of this rigmarole. Buying forever is the smartest way to shop, and now is the smartest time to do it. Right now, you can get 25% off your next Fire Tea purchase when you do fireteabrand.com slash Theo. That's Fireteea, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y, brand.com slash T-H-E-O for 25% off fireteabrand.com slash Theo. It's, uh, um, yeah. We had a question that came in. This is a question that came in from a young man right here. About your time at Michigan State, he had a kind of a long preamble. So maybe not. For Tony is... Um, well, first of all, I grew up in East Lansing, so I'm familiar kind of with the incredible bulk, the folklore, the story of the incredible bulk. Um, and I, but I was curious, and I know a lot of other people are going to be asking questions about steroids and small penis things, and I'm sure. Um, but what was uh, what was the academic life of a 1980s football star like? Did you go to class? Did people do your work for you, or? maybe you were really diligent in class. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I suspect that it was different from the stereotypical college student's uh, experience. That's a great question. It is a great question. It's a great question. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll be 100% transparent. <clears throat> um, I went to class. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't graduate. I was like 12 credits short of graduating. Wow. When I, and then I moved to Cali after the Gator Bowls, our last game. And then I, I would have to go through spring semester and graduate. And I, and I already knew I was gonna get drafted. Okay. Um, so you're just like- I just went to Cali and went to, moved to Whittier, trained with my trainer, and just, it was balls to the walls for the next six months training. What was the studying like when were you at school? You know, it was, um, you know what? I guess I'd be lying if I said there was no favoritism mm -hmm. because there was there wasn't favoritism favoritism is not a good word there were certain things that were made just a little bit more convenient for us but it's really at the end of the day it comes down to what you make it right cuz if i wanted i mean michigan state's known as a great agricultural school and great veterinary school um so it if i really applied myself which i wish i would have um it, like in something like business administration or you know something that that there's fundamentals of business that will be timeless. Right. Right. There's obviously the internet changed a lot of that, but still relationships are a fundamental of business. Yeah. So, but you know, I took public relations and marketing, which is still good, even though the marketing these days is so different than the marketing would have been in the eighties, like print marketing and stuff and right, right, you know, yeah. or public relations or whatever. But that also did help me. Changed, yeah. yeah. But that did help me with a lot of the, you know, PR stuff with interviews and just, you know, stuff like that. Um, so you were going to class some. Yeah. I mean, we had tutors at our disposal, mm -hmm. but you know, our, like my day was started at 7 AM and, but you know, you have to be at practice at three and I'd have classes all the way up to like about an hour and a half before practice, uh, classes all day before practice. And then you'd practice for two hours and then you'd have to watch film mm -hmm. and then they'd have study hall, mandatory study hall at the football facility. Right. So they'd have tutors come in if we wanted them and there'd be tutors available. And then, um, or you could just stay in study hall. Like it was mandatory by the coach. And were you a prize pig at this point? Were you like one of like the heroes on the squad? When I, when I went there? Yeah. No, I was, I was just one of the guys in this class. There was some studs that came in my class. Did y'all ever play against Rudy from uh, that movie? No, we ain't that old. Yeah, good. <laughs> I can't remember who they played. Notre Dame. There. That was Notre Dame. He yeah, played for was, Notre Dame, but yeah. we played Notre Dame every year. Yeah. But no, wow. he was, he's, he's probably 10 years older, the next generation. Um, so so he, the academics were not, I mean, it wasn't like, uh, there was no like no freebies given. Right. You know, there were some, there, you, I would always have like, I would say one course a semester that was kind of like, you pretty much, if you attended it, you're pretty much going to pass. Right. It almost sounds like anybody's college experience. I mean, I remember going in like the Greek kids always had all the tests mm -hmm. somehow. Right, right. Like that was insane. <laughs> How the fuck does this girl, just because she's kind of hot, right, you know, right, right. Rebecca has the fucking <laughs> right, test. Right. You know what I'm saying? Dude, she's never done anything. Right. 
But it was crazy. So you right. have like people really studying, and right. then you would just go over to somebody's house right. the night before, and they would have the same. It was just college. Sometimes was crazy. I got remember getting paid by a coach one time to write uh, papers for some of the players, even. Um, so I think there's always been some of that in school. You know, just like uh, that athletes get help. Yeah, they get. His, but I think they should because their time is taken up. That's a good with point. practice too, right? And so that being said, their time is taken up with practice plus. How much revenue does that sport bring oh. into that school? So, and, and that's not saying, hey, look, the other sports don't matter. Yes, they matter. But a lot of those other sports at that school or any school wouldn't exist. Like, not, I'm not talking about basketball. I'm talking about, yeah. I'm not even going to say because I don't want to offend it. I'm not yeah. going to say it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say anything. The yeah. alphabet. Between titles uh, yeah. eight and 10. Right. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, you know, I respect anybody that wants to compete and do something that they love to do. But totally, but the money comes from that. That's where, the, where a lot of the revenue And in Michigan comes State, from. it's football and basketball. Right. So, um, which by the way, they beat Duke yesterday. Did they? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. I saw Kentucky lost last night, I think, to Kansas. Did, um, was there an opportunity for you to play basketball at some point? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> They never said, hey, guy, I would have. <laughs> no. I would have said, hey, guy. Intramural, maybe. Oh, really? <laughs> I wasn't the last guy picked in intramural teams. Okay. But no, Michigan State, like they were, I mean, Magic Johnson had just left there. Wow. Like three, four years prior. And they were like stacked. And they were, I mean, that's big time basketball. Yeah. I mean, they're good. They're, they're, I mean, you know, Indiana's big time basketball too. Because at that time, it was Bobby Knight was there. Oh, wow. And the head coach at state now for basketball was an assistant to Judd Heathcote when I was there. Mm. So I've got to watch uh, this coach just, you know, blossom over the last 30 years. So you get, so you go through Michigan state and then you get drafted. And by then you're like a hero. That's when we see like the big pictures of you. That's when we see you like, um, you know, really kind of put on this, I don't know what what was that like like take me through a little bit of that like did you s kind of start that legend of yourself or was that all kind of media created I know that Sports Illustrated came out like the day before the draft or a couple days before yeah uh, or you know one of the famous um mm -hmm. yeah that's right on that's right on Venice Beach actually damn dude let me tell you this bro if you wanted to uh start an all men's football team today <laughs> on venice beach bro that picture would get it done i'll tell you that i'll tell you this half the men would be wearing roller skates but you could start like the four skates or the, <laughs> not the blades the oh, yeah. rainbow talking, socks yeah, rainbow talking, socks we're talking inline <laughs> we're talking inline but out of line you feel me daddy oh, um <laughs> so take i mean because you like that that image right there, especially for people that are looking at Sports Illustrated, like that's the thing that comes in the mail where it's like, okay, I didn't know about this guy, right. and now I know about this guy, and then I go to the water cooler and I'm talking about like I've known about this guy forever. Right. Yeah. It was like a phenomenon. It was. It was. It really like it was almost overnight. Like that. For me, it wasn't like any different. Like I was like working my ass off every day. To be the best. Like, right. I woke up like literally every day being like, what can I do today to get myself better? And were you doing steroids that whole time? Um, when I was at school? Yeah. Yeah. And did you feel like, um, do you, did you ever, I guess, did you have the, like, were you afraid to probably get off them at that point? I would be afraid to get well, off. Well, I mean, I, I was would, just I, going to math. I was afraid to get off of them. <laughs> you were collecting papers from <laughs> oh, the students. Dude, yeah. <laughs> you were married to the teacher. Oh, that was crazy. <laughs> Um, you know, yeah, I mean, if I had my preference, I would not have got off of them, but the, you know, the NFL's testing was way more, uh, sophisticated. So was that scary then you're getting drafted and you know that like, it you know, it wasn't as scary as you might think. And this is why, because I've, I've looked back at this in my life and every time I took steroids and then got like, if I got on for 12 or 16 weeks and then got off for, uh, 12 weeks and then got back on. I would lose about 10, 15, maximum 20% of my strength. Well, and then, you know, so every time you cycle, you compound that strength and it keep, you keep getting stronger and stronger. So you, when I got drafted, I mean, if you're benching close to 600 pounds and you lose 15 or 20% of your strength, you're still pretty strong. Yeah. And you're still pretty much stronger than a lot of the guys in the NFL. So it really wasn't that much of a concern. The psychological effect of steroids are, as well as they work physically, the multiplier on the psychological effect, in my opinion, are at least five to tenfold. Mm. Um, like, you know that feeling you were talking about earlier, like when you feel like, yeah. yeah. Like, and then, then you don't have that feeling. 
Yeah. Right. And you're going to another level. Oh, that would be to me. That's only it, it gives me anxiety right now hearing you say that. Right. Like, okay, I'm walking into this place, and suddenly, right. like, some of the wet, the sword is my sword's different. Right. And all the expectations, all the shit talking I did, not on steroids anymore. Still, all the accusations. Damn. I was like, you know, and I was like, I'm definitely not going to do steroids because it's going to, everybody's going to be like, see, he told you so. He tested positive. Right. So, but you know what the, the thing was? Like, that, that was definitely, that was a spoke in the wheel. But everybody was like, no, that is the reason, the only reason. And it was perfect for me because it was like, there's so much distraction. They were focusing on steroids. I was over here taking 80, 90 painkillers a day, right. <laughs> conning all these pharmacists and doctors. That's crazy. So it took kind of like the thing, like the concentration away from something they didn't know about because they kept saying steroids. Well, I was half in the bag all the time. So at this point, this is when you start to realize you probably have some addiction issues. Yes. Are you, looking back, it's easy to see it, but were you able to see that at the time or not really? Um, my fourth year there, third or fourth year there, well, actually my third year there, I knew it was mainlining pharmaceutical painkillers. That was the problem. When in Green Bay, you mean? Yeah. Damn. I knew that was the problem. So I'm just going to switch to- You're in to, livestock country I'm too. Just, you're getting good <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Like so, right. <laughs> You're talking dairy stuff. Oh, I'm saying you're getting something wrong. I'm surprised right. you weren't making your own milk. You know? I probably could have. <laughs> I'll like, come here a second on this ditty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give it a minute. Jesus, like you wake up ready to work. <laughs> you know, you stick that aluminum machine up on you. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah, <laughs> I've had fresh milk right off of right off the animal. It's not that good I don't either. think it's good. It's no. not that good. And if it's, it's hot. Not, yeah. It's really that. overrated in like a lot of the, you know, old school pictures and stuff you see. But, um, yeah. Uh, and we don't have to talk about, sir. I mean, I, I want to talk we, about your whole life. Yeah, I, you know, I just know anything. it's you know, I just know that it's interesting and it's something that I could kind of relate to, Yeah, you know? Um, and the addiction, like, I never thought I had a problem with drugs until it came to the painkillers. That's because I was like, I like, when you go through physical withdrawal, mm. whether it's alcohol or painkillers, they're different types, but listen, it, it's pain, right? It's not a good, comfortable feeling. And you were putting it in your vein? Yeah, I was mainlining Jeez. it right there with the, and see the mark? Oh, I could hit that vein, dude, right? in the dark. <laughs> a little basketball. Oh, dude, I could hit that, hit that thing in a You could tell I was right-handed, right? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I didn't need a tourniquet, Damn. right? Because I was all veiny anyways, but I knew that that was the problem. That's the rationalization kicked in, right? I know it's the mainlining that's killing me. So I'm just going to switch to oral painkiller. Wow. Well, then you're taking 60, 70, 80, 90 a day. And what were you on? What were some different things you were on at the time? A lot of the basic stuff you'll hear, Pergadam, Percocet. There was one called Fear and All 3 that I really liked. Fear and All 3? I thought it was a movie. <laughs> yeah, right? That's uh, it's the, uh, not the sequel, but the third <laughs> Is it Wesley Snipes in that? <laughs> You know, if you're in all three, how about this? Every year, I you do you, Jason you, versus <laughs> Freddy, isn't it? Bro, you were all, Within myself, oh, yeah. right? It was a dark, it was a dark neighborhood up here, and there were some dark alleys, boy. I tell you, but there was, uh, yeah, there was, uh, there was like, uh, if you're in all, like you, you, you probably don't remember this because it was before the internet. There was something called a PDR, mm -hmm. and it stood for Physician's Desk Reference. And if you'd ever go to your doctor's office back then, they'd have this big, thick, it looked like a big old encyclopedia. Well, it had every drug made that year or that was available that year. So I would, like, this is the lengths I would go to to get the narcotics. Wow. I would find which ones are not triplicates, like triplicate um, copies of a prescription. Okay. Now it's all digital and stuff, even though they get right physical. If it's a triplicate, one of the... Uh, forms goes to the DEA. Okay. One goes to the doctor, and one I think goes to the pharmacy or something. Well, you, the trick was to find something that was a cl like a class or like a duplicate. Okay. Because then it only goes to the pharmacy and your doctor. Wow. And the pharmacies all weren't integrated, so you could like if there was Walgreens on this corner, it's not connected to that Walgreens. I mean, it might be on paperwork. Right. It might be at a Christmas not party. All, right. 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 But that was the old internet. Tony yeah. keep coming by and get all these <laughs> refills, right? <laughs> And uh, wow, but yeah, so I would look for the duplicates, but that still had the certain chemicals that I knew would, you know, mind alter. Wow, so you were in it. Yeah, and then uh, so that 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 was a duplicate, that and injection. And it was used. It was mainly used for women that started labor, mm -hmm. um, because they didn't want to numb them too much because they still had the push. Yeah, but it would give them enough of a relief to take the edge off the pain. So oh, that was like for somebody like a drug addict. It's trying to you know it's perfect. 
perfect. Easy yeah, to I can still go to the bathroom, but I'm gonna be fucked up. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Do um, where was your head at at that point? So up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> And there's stuff that is sober is up my ass. <laughs> how much? Oh, sure. How much? E, what was your ego like at that point? I saw because it's funny. I saw a, a, a David Letterman interview out mm -hmm. there years, and it's hilarious, bro. You have so many funny lines in it. Um, did you like my Theo haircut? Uh, yeah, I yeah. did. Huh? I noticed that. I um, knew. I knew you were on your way. Immediately, <laughs> I was bro. representing. Yeah. <laughs> this is definitely a sign that you're going to end up in recovery. Right. Uh, <laughs> Nothing tells you that. <laughs> But this interview, I thought you were just so, first of all, I could feel a little bit of your nerves just because what does it have to be like for a guy like this to be, I mean, this is a huge show, um, and then to be sitting there, and you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him with a lot of great uh, comedy, a lot of great barbs, um, he had a lot of great lines. What, uh, where was your ego at during this? Because I can imagine that this would get you, probably, you know, your head would also start to gain size. Was that happening for you? Or were you just, were you chill? I mean, where, what was your vibe? No, the ego was starting to get out of control. And and this was, you know, I was, the injectable painkillers were just starting. And I was, I was at this time, I was on the tail end of living in California. I lived in Cali for nine months. And, and that's after the draft? And this was after the draft. Um, Before the season started? Yeah, because I held out till September 5th. Oh, that's right. You're talking about your contract yeah, in this. Because we were going to, because Tyson's people contacted, <laughs> Tyson's people contacted my people. That sounds so fucking stupid. But, but that's how it works here. You right, have to have right, a lot of those right, people. Right. We all get it. But you know, the the cool thing was I loved Letterman growing up. I watched him all the time. And then you get this invite. You're going, are you freaking kidding me? It's like almost as good as getting the invite to be on this show. Almost as good. <laughs> almost as good. And... Cause I was like, Theo who? <laughs> and I was like, I gotta check this guy out online before I answer this email. And I started watching and I'm like four hours later, I'm still watching all these different stuff. And I'm uh, like, this guy's uh, like legit. He's yeah, like authentic. Yeah. He's no bullshit. He's funny as shit. <sighs> We're trying. And he's sober. We're trying our best, man. You guys are doing it, man. I'm telling you. But yeah, I, I, I am really glad that you, that, you, uh, that you gave us the opportunity to be here with no, you I today. appreciate it. I really it. am, man. Um, so yeah, because it's just, it's interesting, man. Like uh, for one, I'm surprised how easy it is for me to talk to somebody else that's in recovery. Mm. You know, like a lot, like a we lot share of- share that. It's interesting. Yeah. It's like, it's like a non-tangible, it's not a, it is kind of a respect, but it's like, I know you've been through the gutter and I know you fucking pulled yourself out of it. Yeah. And I know how you yeah. feel. It's funny. Yeah. I, it's like, I know how you feel in places where I can't even describe it kind right. of. You right, know? right, right. Yeah. And it's especially interesting because to have those feelings, but also to be such a big guy, like when did that kind of come to a head for you? Because it's like some of those feelings, it's like, damn, I feel like such a bitch, you know? Um, and no offense to bitches, <laughs> you know? No. But Every, if someone hasn't been a bitch in their life yeah. at some point, they have lived in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> if, if you haven't failed <laughs> yeah. in life, okay? I mean, we get the fail on the front page. Yeah. Right? So... Yeah, I mean, I brought it upon myself. I take accountability. Um, Did you start to feel like, um, so take me out on the road out of the, out of the NFL. Mm -hmm. Take me on that some of that road. The first time out? Yeah. So four-year contract with the Packers was a uh, four-year, $4.4 million contract. That was the first offensive lineman to get. Do you need a water? You have one of your own? I got caught. Okay, cool. Um, I, thanks. I got, uh, so I was the first offensive lineman ever in the NFL to make a seven figure average salary per wow. year without ever playing a play. So, you know, that's gonna kind of rub some people wrong, especially offensive linemen. But the smart offensive linemen were like, no, this is gonna help us. Right. Because the next year there was like 27, 28 guys that made over, mm. that were in the league already. And they deserved it. So I went in it with the kind of attitude of, this is a short lived career. And it could be one play and you're done. Like you could blow your knee out, never come back from it. I mean, probably one of the greatest athletes ever, in my opinion, is Bo Jackson. Mm -hmm. And I think the amount of torque that that guy had and strength in his body is what kind of hurt his hip. Like I, I believe that- Right, it's almost too much Yeah, power. it was almost too much, right? Because the guy was like just, in, I mean, baseball, he was an all-star and in, in football, he was a, an all-pro. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, it was ridiculous. unprecedented. Did you play around the same time as him or no? Uh, he was like three, four years older than me. Okay. Um, Herschel was like in that like 
kind of like you could have that discussion with Herschel Walker too. He's like ridiculous, yeah. like athletic. He still looks like yeah, he can play. Yeah, and he's, I mean, he's the real deal. You know, he's a great guy. And um, like for me, the, the, my class, my draft class, like, you know, four of the first five guys are in the Hall of Fame. Can you bring that up, Nick, please? You know, Dion, like Dion Sanders. Right. I've never seen anything like that on the field. Yeah. That guy didn't run across. He glided yeah, across. He floated, the floated, didn't I he? I mean, it was ridiculous what he did. And, um, you know, he's a, he was a pleasure to watch. Um, Is it wild to see your name when you look at this, Tony? Um, not anymore. It's right. kind of like, you know, it's like, I, 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 you know, listen. Wow, I, look at I that feel, lineup. Yeah, look at those guys, huh? I mean, unfortunately, you know, Derek Thomas had that accident. Oh, that was heartbreaking. And, yeah. God. Um, but, you know, Burt Grossman from the Chargers, I had done um, his radio show uh, from San Diego, like maybe a month ago. Um, there's some, like Steve Atwater. Yeah. Do you remember when Atwater hit um, oh, dude. the guy from Kansas City? Uh, uh, the nightmare, the Nigerian nightmare? I don't know if I remember. I remember when he hit a guy from uh, San Francisco one time. Uh, um, in this. Well, the guy that, uh, what was his oh, name? Uh, Christian Okoye. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that... From that hit, that guy's career was never the same because he was running people over like a train. And when he hit that guy, yeah, it go. was one of, I mean, to this day, one of the best hits I've ever seen. And, you know, Atwater was taken, what, late in the first round, right? Watch this. Ooh. And Christian Okoye was like 250, Christian 260. Okoye was unbelievable, man. And he knocked him backwards at full speed. Wow. I'll tell you what. I Those got Broncos a lot of respect for that. Those Broncos were fun to watch. Man. I got a lot of respect for that. Um, so what? What? So take. So you take me. Uh, take me out of the end of that. So you get into. You go into recovery in a rehab. Well, no. Well, yeah. So I get, you know, pretty much, not officially kicked out of the league, but kind of like Green Bay's. Like after the contract was over, after four years, they're like, we're not going to resign you. We don't, we don't want your services. And they were professional about it. Right. And of course, at that time I was like, well, I don't want to play for you guys. It's your fault anyway. Is it my career screwed up and my oh, life's yeah. good? It's not my fault, right? <laughs> I was I all about Nick you, all the time. you. I blame right. Nick all the time. Right. It was Nick's fault. Oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I got that tattooed on my arm. <laughs> <laughs> it was Nick's fault <laughs> with an arrow on this one. <laughs> so, so it was, you know, it was, th so that, you know, so I don't, I get that call in January and February, I get the call that my brother uh, had passed. And then, so it was like, God, things can't get worse. It's like, oh man, don't ever say that. Because <laughs> things just got worse. <laughs> they got worse. And I knew that, I mean, I knew that my NFL career with the Packers was a definite bust because of the my addiction problem. And just my, you know, not being capable of, doing what I could do before. I just wasn't capable. I don't think I could have worked at a, anywhere, 7-Eleven. And that's not dissing 7-Eleven or anything. Yeah. It's just, I wasn't responsible enough to show up. And for three years after that, that I was out of the league, I, it just get darker and darker and darker and more and more and more painkillers. And where were you living at that time? It, I was in uh, Michigan, Maple City, Michigan, which is right by Traverse City. Wow. I can imagine it gets pretty dark if you start just killing pain over in Michigan after a while. <laughs> yeah, Michigan's beautiful though. Well, Michigan's a great Michigan, place. I yeah. just imagine like in those long winters oh, and those places, you know what dude, I'm saying? Like I imagine was, that uh, coming around. It was a like, long summer, it was a long <laughs> spring, it was a long fall, everything was, everything was like, why do these bad things keep happening to me? It couldn't be me, could it? <laughs> and you were just on a lot of painkillers, huh? Yeah. And were you just like spending days in bed? Were you just like doing, I mean, were you um, partying? Were you having? Like, no, I, was, uh, I wasn't I was much for like going out to party. Like I, I was like kind of like a loner drink. I was married and stuff, you know, and, and we had a, a, a daughter, our first daughter. And um, it was it was like isolated drinking, I guess. Drinking and drugging would be the isolated, I think would be the best way to describe it. I hated people. Yeah. You know, because just guys they're gonna interrupt my buzz mm. and i know i want my buzz perfect and they're <laughs> watching this white bronco go down to 405 <laughs> and i'm in michigan i'm going can you believe this shit is happening am i, am I being messed up or is this shit really happening like and you know it, it was it was like a it, it was like a, i mean you're conscious you know what's going on but it's a blur mm. it's like a blur yeah 
yeah, being being messed up, that, that kind of stuff is a blur. Especially it feels like with pain with painkillers. I never got into painkillers, but the couple times I did. <clears throat> My friend got arrested, and I just woke up in my car. Right, you know, and so just it affects shit like people that differently would too, right? Like for me, like really, a painkiller is a downer. It's a depressant, as is alcohol. But for me, when I would take a downer, like painkiller, like a opiate, I would get high, mm. like like energy high, and I'd be like, "Let's go to the mall, right?" <laughs> and walk around the food court and get something from every place. Right? <laughs> um, Such an offensive lineman right. high. <laughs> 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 Not much has changed there, <laughs> but, but it, it, it was, it was weird. But then, you know, that darkness sets in. Yeah. It's not good. It's, uh, when the darkness gets that dark, you either get sober or you die or you die from it. Yeah. Or an, or a symptom from it, whether you take your own life, whether you, your liver goes, whether your heart goes, whether all the side effects. What do you think right now? I mean, you know, we had this guy, Morgan Wallen, on the podcast last week. He's a country musician. And we talked briefly about the side effects of this, all this lockdowning and the inability of, like, I'm going to meet with a, with a new sponsor later today, actually, mm -hmm. to go over to start doing the step work again. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to find a place to meet. And it's like, we can't even meet anywhere. Right. Like we have to meet at one of our houses, right. which is fine. But if you're, if you're just getting into trying doing the steps or something, like if somebody's like, Hey, come over to my house and you've never even met them. Right. Like that can be, you yeah, know, awkward. some guys won't go do that. Right. And it just makes me like all the meet, you know, so many of the meeting rooms, even though some are still going mm -hmm. on the DL, but like a lot of them being closed. And I just, I, I, I feel like we're going to lose more people from Definitely. the fallout of addiction problems than we ever are from this that, silly disease or whatever, yeah, COVID. And that's just from addiction. What about just mental illness, right? Oh. Like like the suicides, I saw you know a report. I don't know what to believe anymore when I see, right? Oh, totally, it's like yeah. so warped one way or the other. But numbers are numbers. Facts are facts. And like there's a fourfold numbers are up in this one state of teenage suicides. Mm from last year to this year. And it's like, well, what's the only difference? The lockdown, right? Yeah. And not no nobody in school. And it's like kids that were on the fence with maybe depression or with, you know, kind of trying to figure out still who they are. It only took me like 40 years, but <laughs> I'm still <laughs> trying to figure it out. <laughs> but We're but, slow learners right, though. As long as we're learning, learning right? Yeah. As long as we're trying to learn. Um, so, you know, a lot of those people, went on the fence the other way and just took themselves out because they felt it was, it was, you know, easier. Or yeah. Kind of, and it is easier. It's the easy way out. It's, you know, and it's, that's, you know, no disrespect to, to, you know, people that are related that has had somebody do that to themselves because it's, it's, a, it's gotta be a horrible feeling. I mean, oh, I've man. had friends that have done it and I, and I just like, my heart just bleeds for them. Um, because it's like, I mean, how bad does it have to get to do that? And it, you know, it's like, well, it did get that bad. You know, for me, it got that bad. Yeah. And oh, there's, I've had some moments over the years yeah, where you're like, right? yeah, you just isolate enough where you feel like nobody cares, yep. even though they do, but you, you just, so, have, yeah. The worst conversation to have is with yourself uh, in your head. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's a bad conversation. It's a bad conversation. <laughs> it's, a bad, it's like, I got to run it by a lot of people. Yeah. You know, and, and not, there's like three or four people that I like trust my life with. And I'll just be like, what do you think of this? Am I out of line here? Is my is my ego getting into this, or is am I being selfish with this, or is this an opportunity I should take advantage of? And you know, because a lot of times my perspective is different. I grew up like I think your environment, the way you grow up, affects your perspective on life and your life's experiences. Mm -hmm. um, that's like easy. That's obvious. So that's why I need other people's perspectives. If 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 people were to raise their kids today say the way i was raised they'd be in jail right for child abuse right or like you know you got slapped or whatever i only had to get hit well slapped in my face twice before you pancake block someone no it was once uh, I, I was like oh before you got yeah. it together before i was like okay. after after the second time i was like crystal clear i understand uh, yeah. <laughs> if you say don't do this i won't that's the rule yeah and and i was like you know 6 7 years old and it was like and, and you know what? I'm glad that it was that way for me because I don't want to be babied. Right. I don't want to be, you know, 
I don't want to do pillow fights. It's funny because you say baby, and, I, and sometimes I feel like honestly, what I feel like sometimes is a baby. I'm like I'm like I'm a baby that never got certain things when I was a baby, mm -hmm. probably. So fucking sometimes I still act like a baby, Would but then think, I'm the only person there. It's like, I'm the baby and I'm the person fucking reaching and that has to reach into the crib to fucking help myself, you know? <laughs> so thankfully over time, I start to realize that I need to be more, at least I know I'm capable after a few minutes of being the baby or getting a which perspective. Which is fine. Yeah. Yes. We're just allowed. You're allowed to and do I that. And I can't help it. Right. A lot of time I can't help right. it. Right. Um, so when did, so we kind of gone through like a little bit of like your journey. So tell me like, like when did you start to get like a new perspective kind of? March 23rd in 95, I walked into that treatment center and I remember thinking to myself, like I can picture that, that stainless steel door, like industrial door and thinking to myself, the fun's over. Yeah. And, but I was like, I'd rather be boring and sober than miserable and drunk or a, an alcoholic life. And 11 days later, I stayed in that treatment center 17 days. At the day 11, I started laughing again. Mm -hmm. And uh, my gut hurt from laughing that day. Wow. And I was like, I forgot about that. You feeling. noticed it. I forgot about that feeling. Isn't that powerful. And I was like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm digging my claws into it. And I've been laughing ever since. Damn. Even on the tragic days. There's been some kind of laughter, even if it's been internal, like amusement in my own head. Like, as you know, like we make fun of or poke fun of ourselves. Oh, yeah. I don't have to sit and laugh out loud to be, you know, put things in perspective. But, you know, even on days where my mom died three years or three and a half years ago, it was like a hard day for me. And, 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 and really, it was like the harder year after was harder for me than that week that, you know, that she had died and stuff. Cause you year. almost have stuff to do that week. Yeah. In a weird like, way. Was, I kick into like, you know, I got to get things done. There's responsibilities. I got to, you know, make sure things are right. And then once you sit, you know, that passes and then you sink in and then you're not buying that ticket to go see mom in November, right. like for, to see her for Christmas. Cause you're like, mom ain't there. I'm gone. That's when you're like, fuck. That's heavy. Um, so you, so you went into there, you started to get better. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, day eleven, started laughing again, and then yeah, those little things, man. You notice, I, I remember having a uh, a thought that made me laugh. I remember just driving one time, and um, and I've struggled in and out over my five years in recovery, mm -hmm. but I've never given up on mm -hmm. on the program or yep. or trying to uh, you know, I haven't given up on that path yet in my life. Um, and I'm trying it new now, you know, trying it again. Um. <clears throat> But I remember, yeah, a time when I just was driving down the road and I laughed just by myself. And I was like, fuck, I haven't done that in months. Just the little things that were like, um, that you just came, or just like, uh, I remember I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I didn't have a thought in my head. And it was like, Jesus Christ, this is so nice. Isn't that nice? <laughs> the noise is not there. Yeah, just like. Especially for someone like you. Yeah, well, it's like somebody started. It's right. like somebody left something plugged in that's rattling like forty years <laughs> ago, and it's rattling all the. And I can't find it. Put a twist tie yeah. around that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah. No, I, I um, it's that noise. So you had a second opportunity with the NFL. Yeah. Okay. Which I was very lucky to get because I burned all my bridges. I was wow. I was thorough. Right. <laughs> I burned them all. I was like, I'm not going to burn one or two. I'm going to fry them all because it's all their fault. It couldn't be my fault, and. So, you know, there was a huge paradigm shift once I left sobriety. It literally almost went to what's for, it went from what's in it for me to what can I pack into life? Mm. What can I pack into, how can I make things right that I wronged? And then after I make some of those things right, because some of me can't, then how am I going to live? And am I going to be adding on a daily basis to life and participating or am I going to be sucking and conning people like sucking out of life and conning stuff out of people. And, you know, because then it's like, it's like that, you know, you've, I'm sure you've heard that analogy of the, so the drunk horse thief that you get sober, you get a, you know, if you get a, have a drunk horse thief that steals horses mm -hmm. and you sober him up, what do you have? Mm -hmm. You have a sober horse thief. He right. still steals. He's got to change. Right. He's right. got to change. And so I, I knew that, okay, the, the chemical part was changed, but now I had to change. And that paradigm shift happened kind of naturally just from the removal of chemical of what's in it for me to, holy shit, like I did some fucked up stuff and I wronged some people. Right. 
And so I, you know, made those amends over, you know, most of those amends were done over the first two years. And then the, one of the bigger ones with my dad, um, wasn't done until the four year mark, but it was done and it was, it was, you know, necessary. It was, what was that like? Well, you know what? It was the, it was the one that obviously scared me the most. It was, had the most fear. And I was in Indianapolis. He was in Canada and, um, a, I was four years sober and a guy walked in to a regular meeting. I went to a 12 and 12 meeting and he was like almost 20 years sober and a regular guy that I knew. And he had said that his dad had passed away that day. Mm. And, uh, and then he talked about how he never made amends to his dad. And I was wow. like, holy shit. I was like, Louisville slugger came out again. Damn. Out that next day I was on the phone with my dad. I was like, we do it for Christmas. I'd like to come up and see ya. You know, and uh, and he was like, yeah. So I went out, like, that was towards the end of the season. So when the season was over, um, I drove up to Canada and made amends to him. And uh, it was, it was, it's, you know, it's like, I, I was lucky to be surrounded by good sobriety. Guys that were very good in sobriety and that were, and I chose a sponsor that would not baby me. I don't want to be babied. Um, and, he said, when you make amends, you look at the person in the eye and you tell him you were wrong mm. for the way you acted or what you said or what you did. You don't say, I'm sorry, because, you know, you, how many times have we said, I'm sorry for this when we're all messed up, right? I'm yeah. sorry. We kept, we're always apologizing, right? Yeah. It's like, no. He literally said, say, I was wrong for acting that way while I was drinking or drugging or whatever. And, you know, I'm here to you know, acknowledge it. And even if they played a part in it, it's not about that. Yeah. You're there for, to make your part right. And it's crazy how people don't realize that that is the real key to a lot yeah. of it, you know, yeah. is setting yourself free, even though it feels like you're letting them off the hook. Well, you're getting your own But here's the clean. thing, there's a huge caveat in there that is huge to, that I know, I've seen people do this and it's like, I just wanna like punch them in the face. And it's like, they make the amends for them, you know, they do it, they right. make the amends at the expense of that other person. Yeah. It's gonna hurt that other person more rehashing that up or whatever the situation is, it's, there are some things better just left alone. Yeah. And just let your life, the way you live, be the example. And if that person ever approaches you, or if you just get in a situation where it feels right to be like, hey man, you know, about, you know, um, you know about the past or whatever. But there were ones, most of my amends were literally like, like, or I planned them and I, you know, talked to the person or communicated and said, Hey, you know, I'd like to meet up, just talk to you about some stuff. And, um, so they were, you know, mostly like that, but it, to look your dad in the eye and say, I was wrong for all these, it was, wow. Be powerful. It was powerful. Had you been like ashamed of your dad or something? Or had you been like, or scared to death? Were you there? I was fucking six, six, three, 25, you know, strong as shit. Second time in the NFL. And that should put a lot of things in perspective for people that don't understand addiction, that how emotions can run your life and how fear can run your life and how just because you're big and strong doesn't mean you're not scared. Yeah. You know, people have assumptions that, uh, I mean, I've, <laughs> it's been, it's just, I've, there's just been some humorous things. I'm sure as you have had in your life where people have this assumption of what a comedian, how they live, what they drive, what this, you know, they live in this $10 million house or what it's like. Yeah. It, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to me to observe that as life has gone on. But, um, I forgot what the fuck we were talking about. The amends. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Look, we're I've had concussions. <laughs> yeah, fuck, I don't know. I've, I'm not that smart. I never was concussed. <laughs> but I work with a guy who's fucking got a, enough concussions for all of us. And <laughs> not me. Real delinquent, <laughs> not him, yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it, well, it, the thing about putting things in perspective that, look, my fear is the same fear that soccer mom fear has, right? It's like, just because, you know, some people will say to me, you know, like when I played and, and they, even sometimes now, or they might say it and if it's just comes up in conversation about, you know, well, I mean, I know you wouldn't be, a, you know, that wouldn't mess with you because I mean, you know, you could, you could handle a situation like that and I'm thinking to myself and I would literally will be transparent. I'll be like, how do you know? 
Yeah. And, they, and they're like, still not getting it. And I'm like, and then I would just share a story with them. Mm. That is almost, the semantics are different. The story is identical. The situations yeah. are different, but it's identical. And it's like, and I was scared to death. The story I shared with you about my dad. It's like, what do you, like I'm sure there was people going, well, what do you mean you're, you were scared of your dad? Your dad will always be your dad. Yeah. No matter what. And your mom will always be your mom. And, you know, it's like your bigger brother will always be your bigger brother or younger brother or younger sister, or whatever. It's like, it's kind of like we get these certain roles and it's like, you know, dad will always be alpha. No, I don't care if I'm 10 times stronger than him. He'll always be the alpha of the mm. family. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's probably some like a uh, code that's within oh, some of our DNA. Law. Yeah. yeah. Um, we got a question right here that came in from somebody that has a iPhone. And I actually had one too. How often when people hear your name, do uh, they mix your story up with Todd Marinovich? Does that ever happen? You know, uh, hardly ever. Because, yeah, he was just the prospect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was a little bit younger than me. But I I tell you what I do get a lot of is when people will hear my name and they'll be like, they'll be like, are you the... And I'd be like, yeah. (laughs) And they'd be like, okay. (laughs) But that makes sense. I'm like, carry on. That's your name, though. (laughs) Am I I supposed to fake it? That's true. I thought maybe you were the guy that died that fought Rocky for a second. Oh. Um, (laughs) But then, you know, I've made some, I don't know a lot. Here's a young fellow that has a question right Right. here. He's probably trying to buy some wind straw, I bet. (laughs) What up, Theo? What up, Tony? A big fan from the University of Alabama, represent from Tuscaloosa. On a side note, Theo, we're going to beat LSU's ass this weekend. You probably will. Damn. My question yeah. for Tony is, beat it. as a former offensive lineman myself, what was the best game as far as knockdowns or pancakes, whatever you want to call them, that you ever had? And how many did you have? Gang, gang. Gang, bro. What do you think there, Tony? Uh, yeah. there was... Is there a game that stands out, really? Um... I'd, yeah, there's one because I, I like wanted to go out and torture the person mm-hmm. or the team or the school that I didn't like. And it was that other school in Michigan. Michigan. I don't know what their name is, but yeah. there's only one school in Mich- Michigan State, right? No, <laughs> that's no disrespect to U of M. I mean, they're a great institution, but obviously a huge interstate rivalry. And at that time, they were like constantly winning going mm. the rose bowl Bo beckler iconic mm. i mean so much respect for that guy um but you know i, I probably had games where i had more pancakes or off, otfs we used to call them off the film um where you drive a guy so far off the f- like that you don't even see him on the film when you oh, watch nice. film the next day so i had like probably like m- some games that were more but there was a certain Michigan game that we had where I maybe had 13 or 14 pancakes. Wow. But it's because it was Michigan. It was sweeter. Yeah. Right. And um, yeah, it's like, I. it was interesting. Like when I look back and I don't think I'm sadistic, but I didn't play to make friends and I didn't play to help you up if you were my opponent. Mm-hmm. I didn't play dirty. Um, There'll be people that say, well, you, you cheated, okay? And, and that's legit, but I didn't, you know, after, after Michigan State, you know, it's like I didn't take any steroids. But yeah, at school, I mean, yeah, did I take steroids? Was it, yeah, did I cheat? Yeah, I did. I was wrong for doing it, and I don't recommend that anybody does it. Um, but that but, drive for, for like, you know. Yeah, your out, etiquette and stuff, I mean, yeah. what's in your blood and what's in your heart? and what's in your behavior can be different things. Yeah, and you don't, you know, there's people that, especially guys now I'm talking, that are like, well, yeah, but he took steroids, and it's like, okay, well, yeah, why didn't you play in the NFL? Right. Why didn't you become All-American? Why didn't you do all these things if all you had to do was take steroids? Yeah. Right? It's like, it's like you don't just take steroids, sit around, and get jacked. Yeah. Everybody, every guy would be jacked and have abs. Right, you have to put in the work with it. <laughs> right. Right. And my work was relentless because of walking home from snowstorms. Yeah. Because of the head coach I had, because the guy who recruited me, Nick Saban, they were all relentless about work ethic. And the way I grew up, parents were immigrants. They like literally escaped, put their lives on the line out of a communist country in the 50s. Wow. 
So I'm like thinking to myself, I'm laying there on the field at camp, sober in Indianapolis, my second year there, and it's hot as shit out in July, it's humid, and like just beating up with sweat during stretch, right? You still got two hour practice to go and kind of feeling sorry for myself and like, you know, and then I started thinking about a story my mom told me or something where her mom pulls her out of third grade back in the old country in Europe and it was Croatia, but it was at that time Yugoslavia, pulled her out of third grade class and said, the guy that was taking care of our sheep in the mountains has bailed on us, so here's a wooden staff. I need you to go take care of the sheep wow. and, t and keep the wolves off of them. Damn, that's social studies. Right, so, go, so when I, I would start thinking of those stories and I'd be like, I you whiny ass. I know. You feeling sorry and you're getting paid seven figures and you're bitching about it? Of course, this was all internalized, you know, my self-discussion in my head and it helps put things in perspective. And it's not tricking yourself, it's legit perspective. Right. Like that happened in 55, that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Yeah, we've got, I mean, it's even, I think about it during this pandemic, it's like we're all kind of stuck, but then we're all stuck with our machines and our, you know, trimming our manscaping our <laughs> penises or whatever everybody's doing. Just I was doing that yeah. way before the pandemic. Oh, no. I was ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah. I was ahead of the game. You might've been ahead of the game there. <laughs> but you know what, the pandemic for me, mm -hmm. personally, has been awesome. Yeah. Because like I, I've started to realize I really like psychology and like the study of just observation of people and how they act and human behavior and in, including my own. And it, it, it was a fantastic year to do that. Yeah. Like with the toilet paper phenomenon. Yeah. Plus there was a ton of things I had on the back burner that I was gonna eventually get to like when I had a lull in photography or I had a lull in something with work, I would get to this. And so now there was a lull. <laughs> right. So now I was like, okay, well, hey, I can do these projects I had on the back burner because I did, because it was possible. Yeah. So now I've, I got those projects going. And so, you know, for me, personally, it's been a great year and, and, and not so, not as much great monetarily as it's been learning. Mm. It's been freaking phenomenal. It's a good attitude, man. Yeah, we talk about perspectives and stuff in here a lot and not battle it every every week and every day. Um, a lot of what you're doing now is photography, right? Yes. And Did this, I answer that guy's question? That well, man said, he said... Your best game, yeah, Michigan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, best so game. So it was Michigan, yeah. It was against and what Michigan. was Saban like at that time? You know, he was... Do you remember him fondly oh, or no? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I babysat his kids. Oh, damn. Yeah. Um, I would so Nick behave. Was, Nick was, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'd Nick, behave and Nick I'd be was, alarmed. If you freaking bottle fed me, dude, I would be alarmed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nick was uh, awesome. Nick is the same guy. I mean, he's a different guy today, but he was pretty much the core of him was exactly what he is, what you see now. He was about fundamentals, discipline, keeping things simple, removing distractions and do your job. You'd be, you should go talk with Jocko Willink. He'd be great on Jocko's podcast, huh? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What to put you guys together, man. He, you guys. Yeah, could, I'm a huge fan of his. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's good. He's legit. I got his books and stuff. Yeah, he's, um, he's definitely, when I think about giving up, which is a couple times a day, usually at least one of those times I won't. And it's because of him. Both. Yeah. You and me both. Um, yeah, Saban's unbelievable. It's just, it's unprecedented almost what he's done. He was a DB coach when he recruited me, and Ohio was his area. Mm. So, so you was, weren't even on his on his docket. No, he was there looking at another guy who was one of the stars on our team. And then he said to our head coach at the high school, who he knew, was like, "Who's that guy?" And he told him and everything. He goes, "Well, I want you know, we want to talk to him." And they watch film and stuff. And then he they offered me a scholarship. And on I remember sitting with Nick, and Nick was the same. I mean, he's the same. He's a, he's a phenomenal human being. The guy is like a first class human being. Mm -hmm. Him and Terry, his wife, Terry. Um, they're great people. And uh, I was so lucky to be surrounded by some of these people. And even all the mistakes I made, I was so lucky to be surrounded. Isn't that and, amazing? And then to watch Nick go from this DB coach to possibly being one of the greatest ever college football coaches. Yeah. And then when he went to Alabama, I was like, oh, you're not going <laughs> to like knock bear bryant to the side come on now i, know, I mean Bear's that's like iconic now. right yeah. now it's like no that could be argued 
That could be argued. Because he did it at LSU. He yeah. won. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of Michigan State people that hate him because he left Michigan State. as a, He was a head coach at Michigan State when he left for LSU. But... It's like, it's like, look, man, it's a business. Yeah. It's like, it's funny how your dreams sometimes when they interact with business, how they don't, you wish they would go a certain way you know. or be a certain way. But then sometimes the gifts, you still get your, you still get your dreams. It's just yeah. not exactly how you'd expect. Yeah. Um, looking back, do you feel like, uh, do you feel like you did the best that you could have playing football? Do you feel like what you did was what you were going to do? That was it? Yeah. I, I held nothing back. Yeah. I held nothing back. At Michigan State, um, it's like it's almost like oxymoron to say I held nothing back at Green Bay. I held nothing back drinking and drugging in Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, but I just wasn't capable of giving them everything that you know that they had saw on film. But then when I got sober, I got the chance to go to Indy, and I was like, I literally treated every day like um, like literally like life and death. Wow. It's like, if I don't do this today, I will die. Hmm. And there was times where... Do what, you mean? The work. Right. The and work. and not just the time, the work. The work. During the time. Because you can put in a bunch of time and spin your wheels, or you can put in the time and keep moving forward, even if it's at small increments, because it adds up. Yeah. Um, do you still... Uh, you speak on on recovery and stuff these days. Mm -hmm. I speak on recovery, um, adversity, and uh, just a lot on uh, making you know, like, kind of like there's a talk I give when I speak, pub mm -hmm. do public speaks, uh, which <laughs> kind of slowed down after the pandemic. Um, about and the talk is titled uh, "Why Not Me?" Yeah, and then it's got like it's three or four description for the people that book people to speak on what I talk about. And, you know, I've always asked myself, why not me be the one to go from Canada? And I was like 11 years old when I made that decision. Like, I want to play in the NFL. Yeah, living the dream. I mean, you really got to live out your dream. And I was like, why not me? Right. Like, why? Like, seriously, why not? Somebody's going to win the, the um, Powerball, right? So why not me? Well, okay, we got to take some action. You got to buy a ticket. Right. So at least you got to have skin in the game. Right. If you don't buy a ticket, you're not serious. Right. Right? At least you're trying, right? You're going to see your sponsor. You're moving. You know one thing. You're moving forward. Whether that's the right sponsor or not, you're looking and seeking for right. making yourself better. Yeah. So that has to be that has to be acknowledged. It has to be acknowledged. Well, I, I think those are the things that build up little bits of esteem inside mm -hmm. of yourself. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. I'm making this choice. I'm this is what I'm going to yeah. do. You know, it's like um, you go to whether the, it goes yeah. well or not. Right. Then you are you already win a little bit because you're like, oh, I'm, I'm I'm making this effort. Yeah. You know, that's such the hard part sometimes is just you know sharing or raising your hand or yeah, I struggle with it too. Yeah, it's I, hard. It's crazy sometimes. I'll be in a meeting and I'll everything in my brain will be like, just share, just tell what's right. going on, and right. I won't. You know, I think you like. I think when you do, like, I think, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I've watched a lot of your stuff in the last couple of weeks, and I'm like, fuck, you know, like, this guy has described a lot of my life. Like, so, you, like, it's like, there's so many common things, but the state I like the least in the whole union is Louisiana. Yeah. I just, it's just one of those states that I've gone there like three or four times to play, to play the Saints, and it's always been smoggy and smelly. Yeah. So like that's my impression of Louisiana. There's so much tradition there and and like stuff and like culture and stuff that I, you know, don't like I know about but I really don't know about. Right. And it's like it's 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 not a disrespect to the people. It's just kind of like well, every time I've gone there it's kind of been dirty and smelly. Yeah, sometimes you get those experiences in places. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and but I'm sure there's people like, you know, you live in the desert in Arizona. It's like you know yeah they got a lot of uh serpents out there. yeah and scorpions and uh people and have divorcees and they're crystals. trying to get that money <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> oh they stick out like a sword oh, oh my god Jesus. they're red flags walking around oh. all they need is a sickle and a <laughs> hammer <laughs> uh yeah connection is so key man it's crazy how connection breaks down the different things that we well yeah, you know what like really crazy the other, things that we the other keep day. us apart yeah the other day, you had said something. When you do your like uh, solo podcast, mm -hmm. you do like a lot of talking about what's going on and stuff. And you talked about 
you had said something and I was like, I can fucking relate to that shit there. I pulled into a donut shop and I started crying. Oh, wow. Didn't get out of my vehicle. <laughs> you, that was me. You go, wasn't oh, touching was myself. You. Yeah, no, no. When I was listening to you, I was oh, watching yeah. it on the YouTube. I'm like, fuck, I, I right. feel, I feel You're like. You're like, wait I a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but, but you know, and then you kind of. Right, right. And I'm like, yeah, I know that feeling. And, and it's yeah. like, you know, you think like, like you shared it. It's real. It's transparent. Yeah. But you don't know how that affects other people. Right. Because I was like, ooh, fuck, I know that feeling. It may not have been a donut shop. might have been a Denny's right. that I pulled into. Or it just might have been an empty parking lot yeah. that I pulled into and started feeling sorry for myself. If oh, that yeah. was the case for me or whatever the case was. And then, you know, I, I love the fact that you can laugh at yourself because you crack a joke while you're doing it. And you do it without laughing. And you say, well, I was kind, but I wasn't touching myself. Yeah. And I was I'm glad I wasn't. <laughs> Because people walk by, you get arrested for that. Well, yeah, now you right. will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a long john with cream in it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's your that's the original Tim Hortons right there, dude. It's some guy masturbating. That's a cake donut there. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just having a day, man. I just had a weird morning. It was just kind of lonesome, and I went there, and then my brother's talking to me, and my brother's been doing this thing recently, like when we're on the phone, if I'm talking about like uh, how I'm feeling or just something that's going on. Like he'll be like, oh, if you need me to stay on the phone with you after we're done talking, I'll just sit here with you, you know? And I won't say anything. And you don't have to say anything. Right. And he's like, I'll just sit here with you. That's pretty cool. You know? And man, it just like. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's. It was crazy because I just never had anybody say, hey, right. you know, no matter what you're feeling or thinking right now, right. it's okay. Right. I'm just going to be here with you. Right. And it, you don't have to say anything and I don't have to say anything. Right. And I and I'm just here for you. And man, it just Dude, that's powerful. He, oh, it just like it just it it gets uncontrollable. Yeah. I'm just like, man, that's powerful. You know, uh, that's real shit. It's not it's like, that's authentic, real stuff. And you find out who the real who who's in your who's loyal to you. Yeah. Like and there's there's different levels, I guess, of loyalty, different degrees of loyalty, but. Like when it comes to life and death, I'm talking. Yeah. That's the only loyalty I want, I'm talking about is like, I'll be in your corner even if you're wrong. Yeah. Like that's the kind of loyalty I'm looking for. And I have less than, in my, at 54 years old, I have less than that on, you know, on one hand, like less than five people, less than four people. Well, and it's, it's interesting because the, the, one of the remarkable things about it for me sometimes is that I think some of my, reality and the a little bit of the pain that comes with it is that i don't know if i'm ever that for anyone oh. and so some of well, it I just is told a realization you. You i just know? shared with you about the donut thing yeah. and it wasn't it was a funny thing oh that's interesting and i'm sure people were like well that was like out of left field but here i am at 20 almost 26 years sober going like it made me stop it stopped me in my tracks yeah so I was doing shit around the where I live. I was doing something, right? And I had your podcast on, and I was listening to it, and and I was like, "Oh fuck!" I was like, lump in my throat. I was like, "I know exactly what that feels like." Yeah. So you never know what we say, and we may think it's something like minutia that doesn't important, um, but it'll affect people. Yeah. And it may sp help somebody that's on the fence say, "You know what?" If, if that jackass tony can do it i can do it like i can get right. sober i can at least try and you know what there's a lot of paths to sobriety the 12 steps aren't the only way it was the way that worked for me yeah and i don't question it and i back it up and i'll help any i'll help somebody if they think you know if they think having a crystal in front of them or something as long as it's not crystal meth yeah. <laughs> Yeah, huh? <laughs> a Sedona crystal. Oh, yeah. If they think that's going to get them sober, okay, so be it. It's like, all right, look, if you're trying to improve your life and if you don't drink, and it's like, well, you can't be, you know, dropping acid around a crystal trying not to drink because, right. well, that's kind of, you know, you're. Yeah, you got to give something into the program. That's the thing about it. You know, it's like you just, you have to give, you have to give up something. That's the only reason there is any value to it to you. Um, yeah. And especially when you're somebody who, has always taken just for yourself right. to have to give something up. That's a really hard thing to do. It is uh, to really give it up and say, you can't, you're not going to do it, you know? So then I want something in return. So that activates right. a part of me. That's going to really seek out to probably get better because right. I'll be damned if I'm going to give something and not get something. Right. Because that's the way that I felt growing up. Like, um, 
like if somebody cared about me that they it was a give and get situation like it was all transactional right you know even if it really right. wasn't right. it may have been right 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 but that's how it registered inside of yeah. me you know in the cash register inside of my heart or whatever that's how it registered right that it was a transaction and that's not quite like that feeling when you freely give selflessly yeah and expect nothing in return now if something does come back in return so be it but if you don't expect anything you're good yeah it's like there was times that there were times, and I noticed this after it happened, and this would be years, a couple, you know, more than five years ago. I would, on Thanksgiving sometimes, or if it was Christmas or whatever, I would just show up at the Phoenix Salvation Army downtown. And I'd be like, um, I've got four hours. What do you need me to do? Like, I can put meals on the table for uh, the people. I can wash dishes. I can bust tables. I can do whatever, take garbages out, do clean spinal up, adjustments. Whatever. You, right? could, you probably could. <laughs> We need you to crack people's backs over here by the by the uh, you to by the stuffing. Pancake this guy. Yeah. You know, it's like so you show up and you do that, right? And it's the humanly right. It's a, it's a good thing to do if you have, if you know if, if, yeah. if that's something that motivates you. So when I've I've done that before, and then I've shared it on social media, like maybe a picture, mm -hmm. and not bragging. Just shared like, a, you know, I, I was lucky to be able to do this today. Right. Then I've done that and not shared it on social media and just shared it with some friends. And then I've done that and not shared it with anybody. Mm. And it's funny because when I don't share that with anybody and I just go do it, I get the most out of it. Wow. It's kind of like that when doing the right thing and doing the stuff when people aren't watching, it's like you still do the right thing. Mm. So it's like, as much as I, I want to say, well, it's my ego that wants other people to know, look at the good stuff I'm doing, right? Even if I just tell my close circle, still part of it the way, I don't think that, and, and, and you know, people that do that, there's nothing wrong with that. No. But I kind of looked at all three of those situations and I found that I got the most out of it because I knew, you know, I believe in God, so I knew God knew. Right. I knew and I was just trying to be of service to God's kids. Yeah. Who were, and those people, the only difference between the people, those people and me when I was drinking was time. Because mm -hmm. it was only a matter of time before I was gonna be at that table with them. If I was lucky to be at that table with them, if I yeah. wasn't dead. Yeah, man, it's, it's interesting to hear that, especially in a day where we live in such a place where we wanna share things and how we do it and how our communication is, you know, our mouths are our phones now. It's like, that's, um, it's interesting, man, but it's a nice reminder, you yeah. know, it's a nice reminder of, uh, especially going into the holiday season, man. Yeah. Um, I got to get some photos taken. Can you, can you take me to Tony's pictures real quick, mm -hmm. please, Nick? Um, Nick forgot his charger at home. That's okay. <laughs> Nick's running We're going to finish up quick. Seven percent. But that's one. how Nick always is. I got one right behind me. <laughs> Nick's always on about a seven percent man. But he's but he the other ninety three percent he spent it. He definitely spent it getting his job done. Right. Um, <laughs> it's not because he just showed up. Was you know he he spent it. Right. He spent it wisely. Wow, this is awesome, man. So yeah. you got into this photography. How did tell me take me through that, man? We'll you know the, the the big catalyst was Dang. the SI cover. That's the big catalyst, right? You're right. There, <laughs> <laughs> I'm catalyzed. <So> like, <laughs> you're in ketosis you're right now. Lady, yeah. Oh, this is interesting. So, yeah, man. it's like a lot of it's compositing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, we'll have a plan. We'll take a, a picture of the person in the studio. And then um, whatever the plan is, we'll, uh, you know, I'll add the composite. And usually mm -hmm. I try to make nine, any composite I do, I try to make the picture, like the background picture, the picture I took, mm -hmm. whether it was of ship rock or whatever. Like, oh, I see what you're saying. So you'll take an actual photo of a person and then put it on another photo of a that I took of a still, scene. Right, right. right. Interesting. So, this one, like that one, this is cool. Like, how I many that thing got a ton of likes? I, I believe this is the one that got a ton of likes. But here's the funny thing: that was 120 weeks ago. Okay, so 79,000 views. Okay, mm -hmm. I got home and I saw this clouds like that. Like they weren't moving. That's time lapse, right? Mm -hmm. There was a shot taken every say three or four seconds, five seconds. And I took my camera and I literally, all I did was I put it on top of my Jeep. No tripod, no, I just put it on top of my Jeep, kind of tried to make it as level as possible, set the timer, 
to record. And I had set, and my camera was like a decent camera. It's like five or 6,000 bucks. So I was like, well, I got to hang out. I'm not going to just like walk away from the Jeep. I'm not yeah. in the middle of a desert where you can walk away from the Jeep and, uh, and, and yeah, that thing ended up something. getting a ton of views. And it's like one of, it was one of the most simple and unexpected photos, you know, and like that you can see the before and after there the, of the gentleman with the white tank on, you know, it's like, that's like the, when you see the final shot or that's like the behind the scenes mm -hmm. shot. And then you see the final shot. Oh, it's interesting. And it's like, a lot of people will say, well, God, I never thought it would look like that. And, yeah. and, and a lot of times the person can't picture what I'm picturing mm. because I have an idea and we try to get on the same page with a lot of stuff. Like that one of the Milky Way there, mm, that video, yeah. that was up Oh, in, I was looking at the other one. Oh yeah, yeah, you were looking at the Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at his Haranus. Right? <laughs> sorry, and that's out of line and I'm sorry too. No, it ain't. Yeah, you're right. Because <laughs> that's a planet, isn't we're it? We're good, yeah, it is. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. That's what you were talking about, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they see the Milky Way coming up. Wow. So that was at Goblin Valley. And, and yeah. what is that, lasers right there? What is that, lasers? No, those are, uh, actually, those are, uh, some of them are shooting stars, but wow. most of them are planes. Wow. Most of them are planes. You can tell the difference between a shooting star and a plane by certain things. Those are planes right there. That's dope, dude. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's crazy. And that's in the middle of freaking nowhere. That's really, really cool. And I love it. Dude, I'll have Willis to do some pictures sometime when I get Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. That'd be super man. cool to get something neat. I think, I think. Get something exciting. Would, yeah. And just something that really like, especially, you know, it would be cool to do something with my boy. Oh, that's a puppy you have? They, well, yeah. He's uh, a Newfoundland, a brown Newfoundland. He's a really good dog. He's, he's the best. So he's from what? He's from another country? Well, he's from the from the province of Newfoundland, oh, which is the east coast of Canada. Yeah, I think I met someone there off the internet once. <laughs> Halifax. <laughs> yeah, Halifax is, yeah. They out there. Yeah, they're... Uh, it's nice over there, I heard. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, cold off the ocean. Yeah, it seems really... Like you just marry whoever you meet first kind of thing. Just make sure they're in your family. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a different, you know, times. I think yeah. we'll see more of that coming up in the future. <laughs> We're going to see a surge of numbers. Well, I think people are tired of just meeting people outside of their families, honestly. I really do. I think people are like, know, oh, this yeah. isn't working out. Yeah. A lot of avenues of humanity aren't really working out that well. It's kind of like a big shakeout just happened of riffraff yeah it's crazy yeah. I, i'm yeah like yeah. but man i'm glad to be a, a part of your tribe tony and, I, and and i'm so thankful that you came in i'm today, grateful man. i got asked to be on and and um i i i feel i can call you a friend yeah you and, can man. uh it, it was it was i mean watch a lot of your stuff i watched a lot of your stuff because not because uh not like i started watching some of it just to make sure you were legit uh-huh right because i mean I just don't watch much of that, like certain genre stuff, right? And when I started watching, I couldn't stop watching. And I started losing track of time. And then when I start losing track of time, when I'm doing something, I know I'm doing something good. Oh, like cool. I know I'm doing something that I'm into. So it's like, it always kept me interested in what like you were, and the diversity of people that you'll have on or talk to. And then when you do the solo ones, when you just are reflecting about stuff, you say funny, like funny stuff. Obviously I find it hilarious because I can relate to so much of it. It's like my movie is Dumb and Dumber, right? <laughs> it's like I can relate to it because that's, I'm freaking Lloyd, right? <laughs> but it's like, it's like I catch myself, I, I probably bank 20 hours of, of uh, whether so YouTube or pot. So I'm like, no, like this, I can relate to this guy. This guy adds like this, show adds to my life even the stupidity part of it adds to my life because i can relate right but there's so many things that go deep yeah that you know like will stop me in my tracks and it's hard to stop me in my tracks that's probably because really i true. walk with purpose and i got shit to do and i ain't got shit to, i ain't got time to stop and just waste time because time is limited for me it's interesting how as we get older, it starts to get a little bit limited. If mm -hmm. somebody ever said, do you want to try to stop Tony Mannerts in his tracks? I would have said, no <laughs> way, please. I'm going to send Nick in to do this job. <laughs> man, no, it's a pleasure, man. It's a, it's a pleasure to talk to somebody. You know, I think I needed to be around somebody today that's in the program. And just, you know, I don't think you know just how much I needed that in my own life today. So I think even you being here you. is kind of like a service call in, in ways that We're, you probably can't even know, you know? Right, right. Um, and that is reciprocal, right? That works both ways yeah and it's cool man and yeah i'm here for you and and we'd love to have you back sometime Absolutely. and and uh and just thank you bro thanks no, for coming I, in today man it's an I'm honor great, dude. i'm it's grateful cool. i'm a grave i'm honored to, to have 
to be on the show and and yeah it's cool man you just never know how things are happening i mean right. literally what happened was i saw 15 seconds of uh, a video about you probably like six weeks ago and um and probably the, the e60 special or something that they did last year maybe yeah and i'm not even sure what it was it, no, it was like a no this was a, just a clip it was just a oh, clip okay. on something and i was like oh man this is so interesting and nick is a huge green Bay packers fan and so right. i was like oh this is this seems like it would be something that we could talk about and then once i looked more into you and saw right. the recovery and stuff i was like oh this should be pretty cool, cool. no i so. appreciate it. it's uh and and i know that somebody that listens to this it'll help somebody yeah It'll help, and it, it, for somebody, it'll reiterate that I am an ass. But yeah. For some, <laughs> for some people, it'll it'll be like if they can do it. Yeah. Why can't I do it? Why can't I get sober? If they can get sober. Yeah, man. Right. Yeah, I think. I mean, we're made of the same stuff, as far as the laws of nature. Oh, it's a simple recipe, man. Yeah. It's it, and we're just pretty, con you know. Why not me? Yeah, why not me, man? Why not me get sober? Why and not stay me? sober and not have to go back? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, I think especially right now, man, it's a good message for a lot of people, you know? Um, Tony Manners, thank you so much, bro. Thanks, brother. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this piece of mind I found I can feel it in my bones but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wind shine that light on me I'll sit and tell you Damn, they're gone, I guess.